Welcome to Firebase Release Notes for June, where we look at updates from the past month. And we have some very interesting deep types today, so let's dig in right away. The Firebase command line interface recently added support for more regions to more features. First up, the CLI can now emulate cloud functions in all US Central 1 and Europe West 1 regions instead of just the default ones. We also added Asia Southeast 1 as a valid real-time database location. And finally, we added Europe Central 2 to the Firebase extensions template so that any new extensions you create can also run in this region. And keep in mind, CLI releases come with native binaries, so you can quickly get started by using the native installer for Windows, Mac, and Linux. If you develop for iOS or other Apple platforms, you're probably aware of the Codable API. By implementing the Codable protocol, you can make your data types compatible with external representations, which is great for encoding and decoding data from, say, a database. As teammate Peter says, friends don't let friends map their data manually. Use a Codable instead. Well, thanks to GitHub user Morten beck Ditlefsen, we now have preliminary Codable support for the real-time database in our iOS SDK. This means that instead of writing your own code to map between JSON properties in the database and fields in your data types, you can now implement the Codable once and then leave it to the SDK to do the mapping for you. To get the support, upgrade to version 8.1 or later of the Firebase SDK for iOS and add the new Firebase Database Swift-Beta product in Swift Package Manager. A few weeks ago, GitHub user Alex Silva Code alerted us that their iOS app was rejected from the App Store because a Firebase SDK in it used an API method that was made private in iOS 15 and then started being flagged since WWDC. Well, thanks to their clear report, we were able to fix the issue and publish an updated version of the iOS SDKs on the same day that it was reported. So thank you, Alex, for helping us fix this issue. And for everyone else, keep on reporting the issues you encounter because, as you can see, it really matters. Crashlytics makes reporting crashes in your apps easy and seamless. The Crashlytics SDK now can be used in all Apple operating systems, so you can continue to develop with confidence. In December, we released full support for Apple Silicon Macs running iOS and macOS apps either natively or through the Rosetta 2 emulation layer. And now, thanks to GitHub user Joster, the Crashlytics SDK also runs on watchOS, reporting common crashes and non-fatal issues there too. And to make it easier to focus on crashes from these platforms, we're expanding the device filtering options in the Firebase console. Check the blog post I link below for more details. With the Firebase Emulator Suite, you can develop apps locally on your development machine without ever hitting your real Firebase project on the server. Now, this affects many of our APIs and most of our SDKs, and we just made an update to the Go Admin SDK. When your app uses Firebase authentication in the emulator, you get a slightly different ID token than the ones issued by the real Firebase on the servers. Now, the emulator does this deliberately so that its ID tokens are never accepted by a Firebase service in production. However, what if you have a use case where you need to send the ID tokens to your own backend service and then verify them there with the admin SDK? Well, with this release, you can now run the admin Go SDK in emulator mode by setting an emulator URL as an environment variable. And in this mode, the admin SDK is then able to verify the emulator issue ID tokens so that you can locally test your application use case end to end. And even better, the admin SDK doesn't even need to download public keys to verify in this scenario so that it too can work completely offline. Those were all the updates we have time for today. If you like them, give this video a like or subscribe to the channel below. My name is Frank Rapuff, and I'll see you on a future episode of Firebase Release Notes.